Ta'ala, our creator and sustainer, and may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his prophets from Adam to Muhammad alayhimu salatu was salam. I bear witness there is no Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his messengers throughout human history to call us to Tawheed. As he said in Surah Al-Anbiya, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ Every prophet, every messenger called the people to the worship of the one true God. How do we know that there is one God and not many as others claim, or there is none as some atheists claim? We explored together the human creation and we said that for our existence to be possible, for you and I to be here, there has to be a creator, a designer. It is impossible for our existence to happen without an external creator. We explored together the different possibilities and different claims if we were here forever, we are not born, we don't die, then we may claim there is no need to think about the Creator. If we thought about ourselves as the creators of ourselves, then we don't need to look further. And if we thought that this is just a random, process that can produce such a sophisticated, complex organism, a thinking organism like us, which we are still in the primitive stages of trying to understand ourselves and the mechanics of our body and how we operate, let alone knowing anything about the ruh that resides in us and upon death leaves the body and we cannot bring ourselves or our loved ones back. If you are truthful, if all those people out there who are claiming that someday we will advance in medicine to the point that we can revive someone and bring them back to life, Say, go ahead. This is the challenge. You don't even understand what is missing. What is leaving the body at the moment of death? How can you restore something you can't see and you can't touch, but you know when your loved one passed away that they are not there anymore? The body is there, maybe even in a So Allah, you know, reasoned gave us the opportunity to think through these possibilities. Gave us that to help us realize that the only possibility for us to exist is for Eternal creator or creators that obviously we don't see. We haven't seen someone more intelligent and more powerful than the human being. We are the masters of this planet. We haven't found any intelligent life outside our planet yet. NASA scientists have explored and listened for decades, waiting to hear something intelligible from outer space to say, maybe there is another civilization, another 
you know, species out there, superior to us, maybe made us. Just like the Greek mythology of some gods out there in another realm who are manipulating us. And they have failed. Because what they are looking for is not reachable with our technologies. La tudrikuhu al-absar wa huwa yudrikul absar Because Allah cannot be seen by any of our technologies. And he can see all what we do. So there was a lot of claim by different religions that there could be multiple gods out there. There's no way to know. And we say, absolutely, there is a way. When we explore together the earth and its makeup, its inhabitants, life on earth, all the humans, all the fish and the bird and the animals and the plant life and the microbes and the germs and everything. We have <clears throat> come to find an important rule that this, everything on earth is interdependent. Our existence would not be possible without all of these other creatures out there. And we called it the interdependency rule or law. We cannot eliminate other species and other creatures and protect our lives. Scientists today, they're realizing how important everything else, even mosquitoes are important or bats, or fish, or birds, or honeybees. Everything that's out there has, you know, uh, a role to play in life. They connect us all together. They also found that we have so many connections on the genetic level that our genome and the genome of other creatures, not just animals, but plants. We share so much with bananas. We share so much with fish. We share so much with every living thing. There is a genetic form. Whoever those other creatures made us, when we consume things, we need the protein that's out there. We need all the ingredients that are out there. Our body is made of the water and earth that's out there. That is why we are so interconnected. That tells us we are not aliens from some other galaxy. We have no connection to the planet we are on. No, we are part of this planet. We're made from this planet. And everything on this planet is all connected. Whoever made this planet, whoever designed this planet, and all of its life forms is the same one. And that's why we also realize that none that exists on this planet is worthy of worship because they are just like us, a different form of life. a different expression of the ability of the creator to express his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them umam, their nations or species. Amthalukum, they're like you. And now we realize, you know, forever we thought we are different from animals different from plants different from no he said all of these all of these life forms are umamun amthalukum ma farratna fil kitab min shay now when we analyze them 
to the basic ingredients, to the genetic level, to the microscopical level, we find that we are all made of the same thing. Similar designs. So we are all interdependent. And we are all purposeful. Allah said, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا Did you think that we just created you for no purpose, in vain? No. So he created us for a reason. He created everything for a reason. The butterflies have a reason. The honey bees have a reason. That's why he mentioned many animals and many insects in the Quran. There's surah about an-nahl, the honeybees, and a surah about the ants. And when you surah, surah an-nahl, surah number 16, and you realize that an-nahl, okay, they have 16 genes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about biological form. So how do we know that an-nahl, if we want to express it in pure scientific language, not as the Arabic name or the English or Latin, okay, it's that creature Okay, that in its DNA, it has 16 genes. And the tartib of the surah, the organization, where is the surah, surah number 16? And there's so much in the surah, I don't want to divert into how we see inside surah al-Nahl, everything is pointing to the number 16, including the ayah that talks about al-Nahl. Itself. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning it not because an-nahl, the bees, have no value in life. They have very, very important role to play in pollinating, cross-pollinating plants. And now scientists, universities have dedicated entire departments just to study one species, an-nahl and found there are thousands of varieties of an nahl across the world. And they are trying to defend the right of these against, you know, fertilizers and against uh, pesticides that kill the honeybees. And as a consequence, it destroys crops and it destroys and causes problems, economic problems. So sometimes our limited knowledge cause us to take actions against other creatures that we think we are cleaning the planet and ridding it of problematic species, but no. Allah has made a purpose for everything, including in our gut. There's bacteria that has very important, useful purpose. And when you overuse antibiotics, you kill all of that and you cause yourself a lot of problems, unknowingly. From the microscopical level to the galaxy level, everything that's there has a purpose. That is the purposeful law. Allah did not create anything in vain or for no reason or no purpose. So that tells us that the creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not playing games. So we didn't create the heavens and the earth and all of this just as a game. 
with no purpose. You know, we're so ignorant that we don't even understand the purpose of all that exists. And we think, why would a creator create everything on earth? Why would he create frogs? Why would he create, you know, lizards? I don't know. But they have an important part of our ecosystem that make life possible. Make my life possible, your life possible. The fact that you and I cannot comprehend with our limited knowledge why Allah created all of this, we should not criticize it and think there is no purpose. All of these rules, the consistency rule that we have seen, everything on earth is composed from the same material in the same design, that we can actually break it down, analyze it, write the laws down in chemistry, in physics, in biology. If it was with no purpose and no consistency, we cannot write a single law. You cannot go to a university and study chemistry because there is no, no consistency rule. Things change constantly. And you cannot predict what's the next formation. It doesn't make sense. At the quantum level, we don't understand much. Because it's not fitting our what we have reached so far of limited knowledge. It took us thousands and thousands of years to develop these basic, basic, obvious laws. But there's so much more to be dis discovered, to be understood. It is there, but we just don't know. Electricity was there since the Stone Age, if there was such a thing. Humans were always developed, and humans were always thinking. And actually, there were greater civilizations in the past than we have seen yet. So this is totally a wrong concept to think that people were so primitive, they were cavemen and they were in a stone age. That's not true. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that you know, he created people before us who were much stronger. أَشَدَّ مِنْهُمْ قُوَّةً وَأَثَارُوا الْأَرْضَ وَعَمَرُوهَا أَكْثَرَ مِمَّا عَمَرُوهَا they build this earth. Right now, explorers, archaeologists, they go, they find sites that are incredible. They find stones that are, you know, several megatons. One stone, but they are cut like you cut cheese with a knife. Very smooth. We don't have strong enough, you know, uh, equipment to move these stones. How did they make them? We don't have sophisticated enough equipment to cut them like that. How? There are such big stones inside the pyramids that are so perfectly cut and smooth that fit exactly. How? When we have problems, you know, maintaining uh, a power grid, we have problem when a weather system comes and hit us, people die. We're, we're weak. We have so much to learn. There are structures that are tens of thousands of years old. They have survived. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and gave knowledge to people before us. Allah 
وفرعون ذي الاوتاد those have done amazing things and their ruins are still even after the destruction stand as a testimony to the power and knowledge so we can't say these were cavemen just because we found some pictures in caves now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human fi ahsani taqweem in the best form intelligent thinking social developed civilizations and that's part of this creation the knowledge that we have is only possible because everything is so consistent because Allah put laws وَخَلَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَقَدَّرَهُ تَقْدِيرًا The qadr is the laws of nature, the laws of Allah in nature, the laws of physics, the laws of chemistry, the laws of biology. That is the qadr that we believe in. We don't believe in randomness. We don't believe in chance. There is nothing by chance. وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَاهُ بِقَدَر Everything we created with a law. That governs that, you know, if you want to land on Mars, there is a law. You follow it accurately, you will be able to land safely. So, the consistency rule extends far beyond our Earth to the entire universe. The hydrogen we have here on Earth, we find existed since the beginning of the universe. And it is everywhere in the universe. So it's not just Allah is the God of Earth, the creator of Earth, but Allah is the creator of the universe. The same materials that we have here on Earth is throughout the universe. That consistency rule across the universe, the interdependency rule that we depend for life here on earth on the sun and the sun depends on the milky way galaxy the milky way depends on the rest of the universe tell us everything is inter interconnected everything has a purpose that tells us there is one god so in islam we are not to believe blindly somebody in our Ancestors say there is one God and we say in our tradition God is one and in your tradition God is three and their tradition God is There are million gods. No, no, no There is no God, but one La ilaha illallah That's why Allah said فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ He didn't accept from us to believe like other religions إِنَّا وَجَدْنَا آبَاءَنَا عَلَىٰ أُمَّةً we found our ancestors practicing this religion and we just follow them. That will not be accepted on the day of judgment. You cannot come to Allah and say, if he asks you, how did you know that I exist and I'm one? You can't say, well, you know, my father taught me that. My mother taught me that. My grandfather used to do that. No. It's not based on your ancestors. So if somebody comes and say, well, I learned that Jesus is God, or I learned there are so many gods, that will not be accepted from them. Every one of us, Muslim, Christian, Jew, Hindu, atheist, whatever, he gave all of us eyes to see, ears to hear, brain to think, أَفَلَمْ تَعْلَمْهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ فَيُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا أَوْ آذَانٌ فَيَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا أَوْ قُلُوبٌ فَيَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا Allah gave us this to use, to contemplate, to think, think, think. أَفَلَا يَتَفَكَّرُونَ أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Don't they think? Don't they contemplate? Don't they research? قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ 
فانظروا كيف بدا الخلق قل انظروا ماذا في السماوات والارض say walk in the earth and see how creation began say look into the heavens and earth and see how this is made for what so we can come back to the conclusion فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ So that each one of us will know with yaqeen and certainty that there is no God but one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is the message of all the prophets. All the prophets taught the same message. And لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That religion never changed. إِنَّ الدِّينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ now, how would I know a little more about my maker, my creator, who I cannot see and I cannot hear? Because he is beyond my abilities to see and hear. But I can conclude that he exists. Everything. He is that parent in that you look at. You know he is there. It's a proof of his qudra and his ability to create. You, you look in yourself, you see it. You look in everything around you, it proves there is a God. And that God is one. But at the same time, he's al-batin. I cannot see him. The atheists have a problem with that, that since they cannot see God, they don't believe in God. Well, if I don't see the ruh, do I just deny it? If I don't see electricity, do I just deny it? If I don't see the waves of my cell phone communication, do I deny it? I have other ways to prove it. I can prove there is electricity when I look at the lights coming on, when I turn the switch on. I can prove there is some communication with invisible waves to me when there is, you know, two cell phones communicating. So not everything we have to see, leave. A lot of things in life we believe without seeing. How many of you saw the coronavirus? I mean, they give you a picture of what it looks like, but really, did you see it? No. We need special equipment to see it. We need special equipment to detect, you know, waves between things. We don't have equipment to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam qala rabbi arini anzur ilayk. Qala lan tarani. Wala anzur ilal jabal. Fa in istakarra makana wa sufa tarani. Musa tested from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala since he had the opportunity to see him. I want to see you. Show me yourself. He said, you cannot see me. Look at the mountain. If the mountain stays there, if I begin to reveal myself, then maybe you will see me. But you can't see him. We're not equipped to see him. There's no technology we have that we can see Allah. The only way for us to see Allah is Yawm Al-Qiyamah. When he recreates us in a different way. In a way that we can actually. Faces on that day. Very pleased and delighted. And looking at its Lord. That is different time, different place, different realm, different dimension. Not here, not now. So how do we know what Allah is like? Of course, in the Quran, Allah gave us his names and his attributes. Al-Asma' al-Husna. Walillahi al-Asma' al-Husna fad'uhu biha. How do we know those are true? If we begin Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us his name, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. We know what's Rahma, what's mercy. Each one of us has mercy in them. Every mother 
of every human and every animal has mercy on its child or offspring. So where did we get the mercy from? Program this into us. You know, you can physically say a human developed physically over through evolution, but who programmed the human with mercy? Who taught the human to be forgiving? This has hardware, it's a software of the human programming. And it differs from one to another. Since we all have it, where did we all get it from? From Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. We can forgive each other when we hurt one another or make mistakes. Where did we get and learn more forgiveness from? For Al-Ghaffar. And then you have religions that believe, okay, God cannot forgive. And that's why he had to send his son to die on a cross in order for him to be able to forgive people who didn't commit a sin. They say, well, Adam and Eve committed the sin. If Adam and Eve committed the sin, well, I'm not guilty. Why should the son pay for the if that was true. And they say, there's no way for me to attain righteousness unless, you know, God sacrifice, not just anyone, on a cross. I say, what about Allah's forgiveness? If I can forgive you and you can forgive me, no matter what, no matter how big the crime is, Allah cannot forgive, doesn't have as much forgiveness as we do. So now it's different. Yet you go to the priest and whatever you did, you say you're forgiven. The priest can forgive, but Allah cannot forgive. Allah inna Allah huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim. So we learn every attribute of Allah every name of Allah the same way. Look in yourself, look around you. You can see, can you think Allah cannot see? Allah gave his creation the ability to see and Allah is blind, cannot see. You can hear and Allah cannot hear. You know, but Allah doesn't know. You can do and Allah cannot do. No, it's very simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we can see limited, he can see infinite. If we can hear limited, he can hear all of us infinitely. But honestly, we don't take much time as Muslims to go over Asma'ullah wa sifati and try to let them understand them and get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know Allah superficially. If we study these asma' and sifat that Allah mentioned in the Quran, Al-Jabbar. المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى Do we spend time? Do we take the time to know our creator? Do we love him? Enough to know him? And if we get to know him, we will love him because we will see that all the good is from Allah. Everything good about us is from Allah. We cannot exist without Allah. Our rizq is from Allah, al-razzaq. He is the one who protects us, al-hafil. We have to take the time. If you do every day one name, 
of the names of Allah. Just think about it, study it, research it, look at in the Quran, the Hadith, learn who are you worshipping? Who are you praying to? Who are you making dua from? Who are you asking to help you? When you make dua, don't just say, Ya Allah, give me this and this and that. Say, Ya Ghafoor, Ighfir li. Ya Rahim, Arhamni. Ya Razzaq, Ruzukni. Use all of his names. Walillahi al-asma'u al-husna, fad'uhu biha. Allah wants us to call him with his, all these beautiful names. But our relationship is very weak, superficial, because we are too busy chasing the dunya. If we focus out on our relationship with Allah, Allah will bring the dunya to us. Allah will subject the dunya to us instead of us subjecting ourselves to the dunya that he made. So my brothers and sisters, as we moved on this journey to learn and to know our maker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's incumbent upon us to each one of us do their own homework. So one day when we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, and he asks us, Abdi, say, Labbaik Allahumma Rabbaik. How did you know that I'm there? When you raise your hands and ask, how did you know that I exist? That I will answer your dua, that I'm able to, to cure your loved one. Because so many humans, they do the same thing, but they don't do it to Allah. You know, the Buddhists don't know Allah. They go to the Buddha, to a statue, and they want the statue to cure their ill loved ones. Billion people in India, they go to the different gods asking them for help, for cure, for this and that. So we shouldn't let our worship of Allah, our ibadah be just like them. It should be based on knowledge, solid knowledge. You know who are you asking. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with you based on that knowledge, based on that relationship. And we should focus on our children. Teach them at their understanding level, depending on their age. Help them understand these concepts so they grow up to be true believers, not just traditional Muslims, classical Muslims who don't know why they believe what they believe. And then when they go to college, they start, you know, getting confused and they leave the religion because they don't really understand the religion. They didn't dig deep enough in the religion. They always lived on the surface following some culture and tradition. Islam is not a culture and tradition. Islam is a deen, is a way of life based on knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our children and our families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to evolve our relationship with him, to know him better. Allah told his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا My Lord, increase me in knowledge. You know, imagine Ibrahim alayhi salam after all what happened. Okay? He is asking, my Lord, show me, how do you bring dead things back to life? You get to a level, you just want to know. You love to know. You can't blame Musa asking Allah, I want to see you. Because he has seen the miracles. But for us, it's like we already know. We don't ask. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in knowledge and iman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum.
الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر والصلاة والسلام على خير البشر نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله سبحانه وتعالى revealed the Quran to his prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to leave nothing in doubt and to leave nothing hidden to help us know him to get to know him and connect with him if you want to hear Allah Allah is speaking to you in the Quran if you want to know what Allah is like he's telling you about himself in the Quran your relationship with the Quran describes how much you really love Allah and you care about Allah so the Quran is not just I'm reading somebody's message and flipping and going through without no that's the time you are one on one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're meeting with him you're listening to him you're reading his message to you and the more time you are spending with the Quran it means you're spending more time with Allah who revealed this Quran that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said you know about the people of the Quran هم أهل الله أهل القرآن هم أهل الله وخاصته. These are the people who are who really love Allah. So I encourage you to make a daily routine to study the Quran, to think about the Quran, to listen to the Quran, to be close to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It is the 